Laurie Baker was born on March 2, 1917, into a staunch Christian Methodist family in England. He went to St. Edward's School and then to the Birmingham School of Architecture. He completed his architecture education in 1937. During this time, he came into contact with a group of people who believed in the power of non-violence and equality of people. The world seemed to be going in the opposite direction. The Second World War had just broken out. He enlisted himself for the Friends Ambulance Unit and travelled to China. While on his way back to England, the ship was stuck in Mumbai for three months. But they were perhaps the three most defining months of his life because it is then that he met Mahatma Gandhi. It was the Mahatma who asked him if he could use his skills to design architecture for the poor. He went to England but only to bid goodbye to his country. The couple settled in a remote village in the hills of Kumau called Chandag and set up a hospital and various schools there. They lived there for 16 years. After that, they went to Elizabeth's home state of Kerala in South India and God's own country made him its own. Simple yet attractive and easily distinguishable are the prominent features of Laurie Becker architecture as he mainly used locally available material and construction techniques. His architecture varied from area to area and the design seems to flow from the surrounding and suiting to the climatic condition of that area. The brick jollies in place of windows would provide proper ventilation and light at lower cost. Other distinctive elements of Baker architecture are the brick traps and pillar slab roofs. Arches, jalis, frameless doors and windows have always been part of Indian architecture. Baker rediscovered their use. Thus Baker's architecture is a true manifestation of Indian philosophy. Baker had one single purpose, to create a beautiful and durable building using the minimum possible quantity of material. Laurie Baker himself worked like a head mason and got involved every stage of construction as he believed that every architect should be aware of even the smallest of job relating to the building. In his lifetime, he designed several houses, institutes, hospital, cathedrals, hostels, schools, public buildings and others. Some of his major projects are the Hamlet, Architect's Residence, Mrs. Nalini Nayak's Residence, Center for Development Studies, Fisherman's Village, Indian Coffee House, Loyola Chapel and Auditorium, St. John's Cathedral and others. The project that is the most representative of Baker's architecture is the Center for Development Studies in Trivendram. All the concerns of his architectural practice, the sensitivity to the natural contours, elements of site, the honest and optimum utilization of material and the cost-effective techniques find an expression in the plan and structure. It is also incorporates all the element characteristics of Baker's style, the jali, traditional roof, step arches, overhanging eaves, the skylight. The design demonstrate how Baker is able to transform a vernacular architecture to suit the requirement of modern academic. Amongst the best of Baker's early houses was for the client number 3 Park within the typical mega government income. Mr. Baker, he asked, I need a 6 bedroom house, but I only have 10,000 rupees. Can you do it? Baker thought for a while and then agreed. Baker's response to a small plot that sloped steeply towards a stream was to keep the building compact, retaining the natural character of the site 
the plan evolved out of two interstate. Baker's concern for the need of each family extends from the private houses he built to the institution and to the low-cost grouping houses as well. His planned prototype for the fisherman's house outside Trivandrum is developed out of the plan of the original hut lost in the cyclone. The new construction is designed to preserve the tradition and custom of the fishermen and at the same time to raise their hygiene standards. This is done with the local material, the passive cooling system. The building elements are suitably assembled and modified on a common plan so as to fulfill the individual. Baker's ability to consistently build structures of lasting value at a low cost is a reason enough for low-income families and groups to accept his methods for cost-reducing technologies. For the Namboli pads and hundreds of others caught in the unaffordable maze of conventional practice, Baker offers the only sensible alternative. Mr. Laurie Baker was a man full of creativity. In his spare time, he liked to paint, draw sketches and even cartoons. He's also authored several books on architecture. Laurie Baker is no longer with us, but his work lives on. His work will evolve through the housing needs of the poor and it will speak to us as long as the common man is relevant. Does that mean forever? Yes, Baker's work, like him, is immortal.